So now in this video, we're going to look at uh, using the NPN bipolar junction transistor. We need two of them as a Schmidt trigger. And so normally we've been using the transistor switch like this. But with the Schmidt trigger, we're going to take our varying voltage. And uh, there you can see the LED suddenly turned on. And now the LED suddenly turned off, even though we're slowly changing the uh, voltage right there. Each one of these squares is half of a volt. And we're going to, actually we can leave that there. That's the oscilloscope probe. Move this jumper over to there. Doesn't really matter. There we go. And, or that resistor I mean, and take a jumper and go to the base of this transistor. This is what we've normally been uh, doing. So if we had a trim pot control and just a transistor switch, now I'll lower the voltage. The voltages will be different points, but you can see the LED is fading down right now before it is off. So we don't have that sudden change. And based on the voltage, this is a 10 kilo ohm resistor too, that's limiting current. But based on the voltage, when we are not saturated or cut off, if we're completely off, we're cut off. If we're completely on, we're saturated. There's a active region here where we have uh, somewhere between full current and no current, somewhere in between. With the Schmidt trigger, we don't have that. It's either full current or no current through the load or the output in this case. So now I took apart the circuit. We'll do a step-by-step -step build. And over here is just the NPN bipolar junction transistor switch. I did that in earlier videos. And so we're not going to go into that one in this video. But in any case, the load is going to be an LED. And so I'm going to put this kind of backwards how I normally wire it. It's going to be more negative on top, more positive on bottom. But in any case, current's going to go through a resistor and then light up the LED at times. So the LED is kind of naturally on. So long lead anode there, short lead cathode there. I'm going to protect the LED with a 510 ohm resistor right there. And uh, so there you can see it is lit right now. It's just naturally on in this particular circuit. So I'm going to turn the power off so that the LED is off. Next we're going to put one of the transistors on there. So of course this is a NPN bipolar junction transistor circuit. These are 2N3904s. We got the flat edge there. That's actually a 2N2222, but it doesn't really matter. We could uh, swap it for one of these. And uh, so in any case, left pin is the emitter, middle pin is the base, right pin is the collector. Emitter, base, collector. So if I turn it this way, now we have the pins lined up like the schematic. Emitter on bottom, base in the middle, collector on top. So the collector's going where the LED anode, the long lead, and the resistor connect. The base is going to a jumper and the emitter is going to a jumper. We're going to put that right there. Now we will put in the other transistor. I have it here again. It's an NPN bipolar junction transistor. Flat side facing us. Emitter base collector with the flat side facing us. Try to show that a little better. So again, I'm going to swivel it that way. So emitter on the bottom, base in the middle, collector on top. So I have those uh, two jumpers there to indicate it where it goes. We put collector to the top jumper, emitter to the bottom jumper. As you can see there, base to collector and emitter to emitter. We made that with those jumpers. Now, I need to get positive to the collector of uh, that transistor, which also, as you can see, connects to the base of that transistor. So this transistor here, now when we apply power, will naturally be on. And that will draw whatever current gets through the resistor there to the negative rail. Plus we have a resistor here, so that will kind of build it up. It'll kind of fight that a little bit. But uh, for the most part, when this is conducting, it'll take all the current and put it to ground. It won't go to the LED. 
the LED will be off. So while we are here I will grab a 100 ohm resistor put that from the base to ground right there as we saw before. The uh, resistor going to where those that jumper is, the two emitters, the resistor is going to the negative rail. So to control this now we will look at the trim pot. So there's three pins under here. They're just little metal uh, pins right there. They work really nice on a breadboard. And so the two end pins, one now is connected to that orange jumper, the other one to that gray jumper which goes to the power rails there. There is a resistive element that runs across there. There's a wiper here that slides across there. It's a, a voltage divider that you can adjust manually. So that uh, middle pin of course is in the middle right there and that is gonna go to the base. We still want to limit uh, current because we can go all the way to the rail which we can actually do with the 100 ohm resistor but that's a lot of current. So we're better off just having uh, resistance between the trim pot. It's a 10 kilo ohm trim pot by the way and also this is a 10 kilo ohm resistor and so we should be all done right now. Let's zoom back and test out that this works. We already looked at the oscilloscope. So this is negative quite a bit. So not terribly surprised the LED is off. We'll work our way up there. You can see the LED is on. I have to go down a little bit to turn it off and now go up a little bit to turn it on. So now I thought we would also look at the Schmidt trigger with a capacitor to set a time for it to turn off. So we'll turn it on with a switch. As soon as we let go of the switch, I'm just going to use a jumper to simulate a switch though, but as soon as we release the switch, the capacitor will discharge and it will take time. And then once it doesn't have enough voltage to get that uh, transistor to conduct, then the output will go low. But uh, in any case, this is the uh, normal setup that we have just for a transistor switch and I'm going to take the 10 kilo ohm resistor there and put it to the base of the transistor. My body's just giving it a false signal. That's why we have somewhat of a glow and the capacitor may not be discharged. Usually you want to discharge it. So you can just put it to uh, two spots that connect as long as it's a low value capacitor. This is a 47 microfarad capacitor. So it might have a little spark or something, but probably won't zap too much uh, metal. So in any case, there you can see I bumped it. And uh, so it's gonna stay on for like a few seconds fully and then fade down. And with the Schmidt trigger, we can avoid that. So it's all the same circuitry over here that we did before and uh, including the 10 kilo ohm resistor. So all we're going to do is wire this away from uh, the trim pot right there. 10 kilo ohm resistor again. I'm given a false signal and move the capacitor. We can make sure it's discharged first and go there. And again, I'm going to simulate closing a switch with a jumper right there. And now we'll see the LED, of course, turns on right away. But when it goes off, it doesn't fade off. It turns off right away. So if you'd rather have that than a fade off, you can do it that way. So that's really it for this video. I did draw this too. You'll see something similar to this quite a bit. And so this is indicating what's going on. The way that we have this wired up, there's hysteresis, there's some feedback. And so the output kind of likes to stay in the condition it is, but it doesn't take a whole lot to finally break that. But if the output is off, it kind of wants to stay off until you raise the signal voltage enough, and then it will turn the output on. And it will stay on until you lower the signal voltage enough to get it back low. So we saw that. So that was uh, called hysteresis, that area where once you change states, you have to go back some more to change states again and then go back the direction you just came from to change states 
that's uh, hysteresis. And those two points are the uh, thresholds right there. And uh, so that's really about it. The uh, concept's not too complicated. And uh, when it comes to transistors, uh, the circuit may be a little tricky to understand or whatever, but for the main part, you can find schematics to wire them up and uh, just build them. And uh, so that's uh, really about it. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the circuit. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.